If you go into a reptile shop and ask somebody, what is the best beginner reptile? They might tell you a bearded dragon, but bearded dragons actually kind of suck as your first reptile. And today, I'm gonna tell you why. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. In my opinion, there are three reasons why bearded dragons are not great reptiles for most people. And then also they kind of are. So let's just get right into it. And by the way, I'm not kind of trashing bearded dragons. You guys know that my favorite reptile in my collection, I do have favorites and it's diamond 100%. I think that they're great pets for some people, but here's why they're not great for beginners. Have I talked your ear off enough? Can we just start? The first thing is size. So number three, we're gonna start with size just simply because they get larger than most reptiles that I would recommend. Well, actually not even really. I just think that the size of the enclosure is a lot bigger than most people expect, especially if you're somebody who walks into a PetSmart, Petco, whatever, or even a reptile shop, and they're selling starter kits. Now, if you buy a starter kit, Zoom at Exoterra, whatever, these are meant to start your reptile as a baby, not have them forever. But a lot of the time with any species, whether it's a hamster or a cat or whatever, especially if it's for a child, you might get bored of the animal. So if you're an enthusiast, this maybe isn't as much for you, but if you're someone who walks in and gets, you know, the UVB light and you get the enclosure and the whole thing, you might never change it. In fact, that's how I got my first bearded dragon at all. Someone I worked with had two bearded dragons, got bored of them, and I ended up with both of them. So it just turned out, well, it worked out for me actually, but for them, it just kind of is, a tale older than time. People get bored of these animals and you do need a big enclosure. Back to my main point after the tirade there, you need a big enclosure. Most people will say, oh, well, you could probably stick a bearded dragon in a 40 and those people I've got a name for. Wrong, you cannot keep a bearded dragon in a 40 gallon enclosure, period. You just can't. They are too big. Bearded dragons are going to get up to about 24 inches sometimes. Now, I get a lot of comments about why is Diamond so small, is he a baby? No, he just had a rough upbringing when he was young. When he was young, he probably didn't get fed as much as he should or the right diet, and that's why he kind of seems wrinkly a bit. It just, he didn't have the greatest life. Now, if you have a bearded dragon that has the greatest life, you get it as a baby, you take great care of it, it might max out and become close 20, 24 inches. In a 40 gallon enclosure, well, I mean, it's not even double the length, so it's not gonna work. And personally, in my opinion, I think for lizards, you should be giving at least double the length. This goes for a lot of things, you know? I think a leopard gecko, you should be keeping in a 20 long at least. I think that for a tegu, if you wanna go bigger, you should be keeping those in an eight foot enclosure, they get to four feet. So just a rule of thumb, just a general rule, uh, double the length is probably pretty good, which is why I recommend a two by four by two. Four by two by two makes more sense. Four feet long, two feet deep, and two feet high. Now, some people will say, well, why do you need that height? They're terrestrial. Well, they're actually semi-arboreal. If you look in the wild, these things are found on fence posts. So no, they're not climbing trees. They're not gonna be up in the canopies or anything like that. Not like there's much of a canopy where they're from in the wild, but you get the idea. They are going to perch, they are going to elevate themselves, and in my opinion, you need a little bit of height. And some people from Europe, Germany, which is in Europe, places like that where they have very high standards, especially for things like bearded dragons, which are very common, they'll tell me I'm crazy and that you need four feet for a bearded dragon. I don't think they're wrong. I know that sounds ridiculous here in North America, and for us, we are taught that a 40 is reasonable, or 75, where people in Germany and other places, am I beating this dead horse? Anyway, you need extra height, you need extra room. You can't keep these guys in a 75 or a 40. I think 120 gallons is minimum. See how he perked up? See, he knows, he wants. He's like, dad, give me a four foot, and maybe one day, buddy, maybe one day. So they're not a great size. But maybe. These guys are the perfect size because, and I'm gonna counter all these points, by the way, because I love bearded dragons. I personally think that if you're in it for the long haul, you're an enthusiast, you actually want these, it's not an impulse purchase, you're willing to go above and beyond, these are kind of a great size, especially if you're someone that maybe has kids or maybe you just wanna hand this off to one of your friends who comes in, where a leopard gecko might be fragile, they can drop their tails, these guys don't. So you can hand this off to somebody and it feels substantial, it's impressive, but it's not dangerous. And I think personally, in my opinion, that's why I like things like 
bearded dragons and Euromastics and blue tongue skinks because they're of a size where they're not fragile, but they're also impressive and they're not dangerous. In my opinion, it's the perfect size, but not for everybody. Most people want a smaller enclosure and that's like, I'm really going in circles here. Can we move on? The second reason I think that bearded dragons make terrible pets for most people is their diet. Now, if you really look at it objectively, it's not a difficult diet. It's just that most people are lazy. Now, this is gonna be in the comments, oh, I'm not, well, maybe you're not, but most people are lazy. I mean, we're busy people, and even if it's not laziness, you're just busy, and you don't wanna be taking care of your animal like it's a full-time job. Well, most of us don't, but I mean, I do, it's pretty fun. I like taking care of my reptiles all the time. And with bearded dragons, they don't eat one thing or the other, and they're not an herbivore, they're not an insectivore, they're an omnivore, they're gonna eat several things. So Diamond, for example, because he's a full grown, he's gonna have a different diet than a baby. And that's another reason. Baby, it's kind of like, you know, when do you need what? And supplementation, and babies, they need mostly insects. So you're gonna need to feed mostly insects, things like crickets and dubia roaches, if they're legal where you are, or black soldier fly larva is another state staple I really like. If you're into this, by the way, black soldier fly larva, there's a link below, and if you use code WWR at the GrubTerra website, you get 10% off and it's shipped to your door. I personally like doing that. Or you feed things like, I don't know, superworms and mealworms on occasion. No, mealworms and superworms cannot eat out of your dragon's stomach, like this, the myth. I get this in the comment section all the time. Worms aren't gonna eat out of the stomach of your bearded dragon. And babies also need a little bit of fruits and vegetables, mostly vegetables, small amounts of fruits. There's a care guide right here if you want me to go more into detail. And as babies grow up, they become adults. That's how things work. And adults need more vegetables than they do insects. So a general rule of thumb, and it deviates depending on whose care guide you look at, babies are 70% insects and 30% fruits and vegetables. Usually 10% of that is Fruit. Anyway, go to the care guide. And adults, they're gonna be kind of the opposite, kind of closer to 50-50, or some people say 30% vegetable, or 30% insects rather, and 75 or 70% 70 vegetables. Man, math is hard. So the diet changes during their lifetime, which is kind of like, when do I change? I get that question all the time. And it takes just a little bit of common sense to figure that out. And a little bit of kind of trial and error, getting your animal to actually eat the vegetables is another thing. Bearded dragons sometimes just don't like to eat their vegetables. It's just hard to get them more on salads than insects. But to keep them healthy, you have to do that. So I feed Diamond, for example, I'll feed him crickets maybe once a week. I'll feed him some mealworms another time a week. So he's getting crickets and mealworms. So insects about twice a week. And then the rest, he gets salads. Things like arugula, Swiss chard, dandelion green, things like that. Uh, there's a whole list in the care guide I pointed to. So, and what I do to try to make it a little bit more interesting for him, and this is a little bit of a uh, trick for you. If you can't get your bearded dragon to eat their salad, put a little bit of bee pollen on it. Crazy, but it actually works. It kind of makes it like sweet. A lot. Someone told me it's like beardy crack, which I mean, I've never done crack, but I imagine it's pretty good. I'm gonna tell you something about me, Joe Rogan, that you might not know. I smoke bee pollen. And then the supplements, that's a whole nother can of worms where, you know, how often do I feed calcium and D3? Cause you can't do enough D3 or sometimes too much D3. How much do you do it? How many times a week? So it's just, it's hard for people to nail down the right diet at first. But if you put a little bit of effort in at the beginning, it's actually fun in my opinion. It's my, in my opinion, it's fun to feed different things. I like just being able to go down there if it's a busy day and I'm feeding all the reptiles and grab a handful of this spring mix that I buy and I just toss it in there or go to the garden and get a thing of Swiss chard and kind of tear it up with my hands and throw it in there and that's it. So it's easy in my opinion, but some people it takes a while to get used to and I just kind of take it for granted that I've had bearded dragons on and off for 13 years. So I just kind of know what I'm doing because I've been doing it long enough, but you can too. So the idea, by the way, of this video, if you haven't got it so far, is not to scare you away. I'm kind of like giving you all the negatives and then how to make them not negatives. Those are called positives, the positives also, because dragons are actually kind of pretty awesome. Just before we get to number one, I had a few questions last week, and this is not a sponsored ad at all. I'm getting paid no money for this. Someone asked, hey, what's with the bracelets, man? Like, are you getting all hippy, hippy, dippy? What are you doing here? So there is a company called Wildlife Collections that reached out to me. And how it works is you buy a bracelet, and with the bracelet comes a card, kind of like this one here, and you get a sea turtle or an elephant or a polar bear or whatever animal. Sea turtles is like a reptile, so it works and you can track your animal. You scan the little QR code, it pulls it up, it shows you a map of where this animal goes, 
it's, in my opinion, absolutely amazing. Someone's at the front door. Really? Anyway, not sponsored. Use the link below and you actually get 20% off. Really? Wildlife Collections, 20% off if you use the discount code below. And uh, they didn't pay me to do this because they put all the money towards the sea turtles and all that sort of thing. So yeah, buy a Wildlife Collections bracelet and don't use plastic straws. Save the sea turtles. Okay, and the number one reason I think that bearded dragons are not great pets for most people, care requirements. Holy moly, these guys, it's a can of worms that you don't even know you've opened up until you get one. And here's what I mean, and this is the number one example that people say, oh, it's not that big of a deal, but it kind of is, UVB. Now, I am not going to be the channel that makes my entire personality obsessing about UVB. We've got enough of those channels, and I think they're awesome because they're drawing attention to this very important thing. My just main thing here is, without UVB, uh, your bearded dragon is gonna die a terrible death. It'll be brutal. It'll be absolutely awful. They need UVB or they'll get metabolic bone disease, amongst many other things that they can get. The best source is sunlight, but most of us can't keep our dragons outside, so just buy a UVB ball a 10.0 or a 12.0, which is kind of a desert species type thing, and make sure you change it. And that's the main thing here. I know that a lot of people, well, it's not that expensive. Well, so if you buy a ballast and you buy the light, let's say it's, I don't know, 150 bucks for what I bought, right? For my ZoomEd one that I bought. But in six months, I'm gonna need to change that bulb. And the bulbs here are, I'm just gonna guess, they're like, between 30 and 60 bucks. So it's say, let's say 60 bucks times to 120 bucks a year times, you know, your bearded dragon will live for 15 years. So you're gonna spend quite a bit of money just on one bulb. The idea here is UVB people either forget or get lazy and don't change it. And then your dragon's gonna die a terrible death, so. That's, uh, I think, the main reason why, especially at the beginning of the channel, I talk so much smack. It's not that I think bearded dragons are bad. I think just most people are bad owners for bearded dragons. And by most people, I mean everyday people who just want a pet that's a reptile, not reptile people who are enthusiasts. Those people do great. And that's you. I'm like basically preaching to the converted here. So you're awesome. You're great. But also with the care requirements, it's just a minefield, especially with a bearded dragon, because we are in 2021. This video is made in 2021 and people still use care guides from the 1980s that say, if you use sand for your bearded dragon or you lose substrate, it'll get impacted and die and your cat will die and you're gonna get rickets. Like, I don't know what it is about the sand and loose substrate thing that people are so against. If you use a proper loose substrate, Bearded dragons will not get impaction and die. Don't use calcium sand. Don't use a builder grade sand. You know, there's certain things not to use. What I use, and I show in the care guide that I've mentioned 400 times, is just a coconut core, which is completely dried out and organic, and a play sand, which has not been tampered with. And I mix it about 50-50. You can put some soil in there too, and it's gonna pass through them if they eat a little bit of it and just feed them on a plate. If you're so worried, make sure that you put the salad on a little plate or in a bowl or whatever, and that's it. You're not gonna have to worry about it. But for new keepers, it's hard for you to know. How are you supposed to know when this guy says this and this guy says that? And anyway, this bald guy who's sweating profusely in the studio says you can definitely use substrate, loose substrate if you choose and use the right one. And for some of us, right, I live in a very humid area in Southern Ontario, Canada. It is 70% humidity outside right now. So it takes a little bit of doing to make sure that the humidity level for a bearded dragon, which should be pretty low, stays around 30, 40%. His right now I think is 37% and it works but it's difficult. You gotta make sure that the basking bulb's in the right spot, it's the right part of your house. It's just kind of hard for some people. Or if you live in a place where you let your house get super hot or super cool and it's hard to make a gradient, it's just difficult. And because of the larger enclosure, which we talked about at the top of the list, it might be difficult to create gradients, humidity, temperature, and things like that if you're not experienced. But also, they're amazing, they're great. The care requirements, in my opinion, aren't that difficult as long as you do your research. And by research, I mean do tons of reading and then back it up with a fun little video like the care guides that you can watch on YouTube. So in my opinion, just to summarize this, 
I think they're amazing. Bearded dragons are amazing. I just think that they're not great for most people. Most people are probably better off if they're just trying to get their feet wet with something like a leopard gecko or just something that's more forgiving. And then as you gain experience, but also I don't like to promote, get a beginner animal just to get some experience when you don't really want it and then get something else later. If you're really dead set on a bearded dragon and you're gonna take care of it and you know it's a 15 year commitment and you're gonna change the UVB and you're gonna give it the diet that it needs and the supplement all of that, then you're gonna be a great owner and I think you should definitely get one. And if that's you and you've decided you're gonna get one and you're looking for an enclosure, there's a link below to the one that I use that I've been showing throughout this video. It is an affiliate link, so I get a couple of cents if you buy one, but it costs you nothing extra. Use code WWR for 20 bucks off your order. With that said, I think I've plugged absolutely everything. And I wanna say thank you so much for hitting the like, subscribe, all of that stuff. It costs you nothing. Thanks for watching the video at all. Your time means a lot to me. You spent time watching some bull guy and his dragon. That's pretty cool. And a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You guys get videos early, you get extra videos, you know about special projects I'm working out, you know about the clutch of eggs that I haven't talked about. And for as little as $1 a month, you can be a Patreon supporter too. All right, Dime, what do you think? Did we talk enough? What do you think? Also there, you can kind of like practice your penmanship with like their, this is so, okay, we're, we're done here. I will see you because we do videos twice a week on Monday.